Welcome to the CS Week Marketplace webinar series. CS Week Marketplace offers fresh perspectives and strategies presented monthly by knowledge specialists from the Conference 37 Platinum and Gold sponsors. I am John Sild and I'm with CS Week and I'll be your moderator today. CS Week and Conference 38 will be held from May 5th through the 9th at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center in San Antonio, Texas. Registration is now available online at www.csweek.org. <coughs> this program will be recorded and available for playback, as are our other archived presentations found under the educational venue Third Tuesday link on our website. Today's program is focusing on core operations, maximizing value through managed services. Attendees are encouraged to upload questions in the Q&A panel as they arise. However, all questions will be held until after the presentation for the Q&A segment. Please address your questions to the All icon and not just the speaker. Today, we are pleased to have Bobby Roberts with the Texas New Mexico Power and Brian Seal with ITRON joining us today. Bobby Roberts is the Manager of Advanced Metering Systems at Texas New Mexico Power. He has more than 20 years of IT implementation experience with six years in the utility industry. His current responsibilities include the oversight of all deployment activities, including the Smart Grid Cellular Solution, back office implementation, and vendor management. Brian Seal is a Senior Manager of North American Solutions Marketing for ITRON with focus on the public power market. SEAL is a 32-year veteran of the utility arena, having started his career at Mississippi Power Company, Southern Company, and working 23 years in areas of distribution, engineering, substation maintenance, load research, power quality, electricity metering, and metering communications. Gentlemen, we are glad to have you on our webinar, and I'm going to toss the ball to Brian. Well, good morning, all. I hope everybody's having a pleasant day so far. Uh, we'd like to talk about uh, managed services and, and maximizing value uh, through those managed services. And uh, before we get off into what is managed services and, and what does this mean for you, and then uh, Bobby will take us through uh, the Texas New Mexico experience, I want to talk a little bit about why this is important. And so we're, we know in my 32 years of being in the industry have seen a lot of change. Uh, we've, we see more and more sensor data, intelligent electronic device data coming online. There's more and more data coming. Uh, we've got to get a hold of that data and do uh, what we need to do to bring value to that. Uh, there is going to be increased competition for qualified people to operate the collection systems required to bring that data in. And in, in complicating that, utilities really just need actionable data. What does this data mean to me, and what do I need to do about it right now uh, to bring value to the utility? Uh, the last thing to, to think about is that customers are also expecting utilities to operate their system uh, with increased reliability using this data. So, so how, do, how can we do that, and how can we bring uh, value to that uh, to that equation, if we would? So, I wanted to talk a bit, a little bit about managed services. You hear a lot about hosted solutions, but what's the difference between managed services and hosted? So, let's address that real quick. There's three. There are three elements uh, for managed services, and those elements really make up uh, secure IT infrastructure. This is, this is the, the hardware and, and the pieces and parts that come together uh, to, to, uh, to provide a, a solution um, the, uh, that, that is hosted some, somewhere in some network operations center, if you would, and then the IT operations to actually operate the equipment. Now, they're not operating... Uh, perhaps the uh, the collection software, but they're keeping the IT infrastructure up, they're keeping it running, they're keeping it current, and then finally the the best piece of this is that uh, of the managed services piece is AMI operations. 
So AMI operations is when all this stuff comes together and somebody is running the system, gathering the data, and then providing that data to the utility. So all three of these pieces make up managed services. If you're in a hosted environment, you get the first two, the secure IT and infrastructure uh, and the IT operations, but not necessarily the last piece. And so we think that last piece is what makes this uh, so valuable to utilities going forward. So what are some of the benefits? Uh, obviously, uh, some of the benefits are that it allows utilities to participate in AMI Smart Grid uh, without a large upfront cost. Typically, what we're seeing is that uh, you don't have to buy the infrastructure, you don't have to set it up, uh, you don't have to have somebody to staff and run it. Really, what you're doing is uh, you buy the equipment, or there may be some sort of lease or something with regard to getting the equipment uh, on the endpoints, but somebody has already stood up all the infrastructure necessary to operate and collect and bring that data back to the utility. So you don't have any of that upfront cost to do that. It allows utilities to start small and grow their system. That's a huge piece uh, to most any company. You want to start where you are today. and You want to know that you have the ability to grow where you would like to grow in the future. One of the things that we're seeing with a lot of utilities is that, uh, listen, we want to focus on uh, what we uh, do best, and we don't want to be burdened with the day-to-day -day operation of a system. And so managed services allows the utility to do both of that. Uh, AMA, they, uh, managed services allows AMI managed tasks to take place and the utility to focus on their, um, their core expertise. Probably, and, and not uh, least important, but probably the most important piece of this is, or an important piece is, is that it allows a predictable cost model. Boy, wouldn't it be great to know that uh, what I pay for gasoline for my car is locked in for five years or ten years at a price that I can afford today. Well, that's what we're seeing with managed services is a predictable cost model so that I know what my costs are for a determined period of time. So let's talk a little bit about the U.S. electric market, and uh, this data came from the EIA. If, uh, if you've not been to the EIA website, uh, you should do so. There's a lot of information out there. Uh, this data comes from the, the latest that I've seen, which is 2011, and it breaks up and shows the market. Uh, and it shows the IOUs typically about 67% uh, with 91 million uh, customers. But if you looked at the uh, what I would consider the public power, uh, which would be the, uh, um, uh, the, the munis and the co-ops, there's about 20 million, a little over 20 million, uh, I mean 40 million customers that are make up uh, that public power sector. So it's quite a large piece. And I think going forward, this is going to be a very important uh, group of folks to, uh, to pay attention to with regard to managed services. We'll show you why in just a second. Interesting, interesting chart from our Navigant Research uh, folks. They did a report uh, last year, and I know they're working to update that report uh, this year. Um, but what we're seeing in this chart is is really what the sales of metering, AMI meters, have done and are predicted to do over the next few years. So everybody recalls that there was a stimulus program. Uh, actually, in 2010, 2011, uh, those were kind of peak years, 2012, and we start seeing a roll-off in AMI solutions that are delivered. Uh, and we see that come back up in 2017, 2018, turning back down possibly toward the, the beginning of uh, the 2020s. And a lot of that is, a lot of that uh, became, uh, the dip is really because of the stimulus or could have been exacerbated by the stimulus. But what's catching that bottom is that the public power sector is starting to move or moving a little bit quicker to adopt AMI technologies. And this rise has to do with the public power, uh, has to do with the public power sector. And as we move further down the line toward the 2020s, we see that some of the IOUs that were early adopters in AMI are actually starting to look at second generation systems and bringing those guys online. Another point of interest is, is what Navigant says today uh, is somewhere about a 30%, 35% uh, penetration of AMI uh, goes in the, in the early 2020s up as high as above 80% penetration, which is a fantastic uh, adoption rate of AMI. And so we'll see if that actually pans out. 
but it does tell us the trends are upwards with the uh, the uptake of AMI, uh, especially um, uh, in um, uh, co-ops today, co-ops and munis, and uh, moving into the IOU in second generation. Next slide we want to take a look at is is and how it looks at managed services or uh, something that uh, Navigant uh, uh, was calling AMS. Uh, I know our friends in Texas uh, refer to AMS as their AMI, but in this piece is AMS, AMI managed services, and we're going to look at the revenue of the U.S. market. And what's interesting in this is that you'll see starting in 2012 there is an uptake in this particular market. And if you look at the cooperatives and public, uh, public, other public power such as munis and the green and the red, those guys are moving moving up. We also see an uptake in the uh, the blue area, which would be the the investor owned utilities. Uh, but most of the growth seems to be uh, down in the public power and cooperative space. So so we see uh, approximately in 2012 we see approximately 350 million dollars uh, per year in 2013, 2012, 2013 to 750 million a year in AMS, AMI Managed Services revenue, just in the co-op market alone uh, out in 2020. So there's significant growth, uh, significant uh, um, uh, concentration of effort in that field. Put this slide in just to give a feel for what the, uh, the co-op market looks like. Um, uh, and uh, you can see, as you would expect, that there are some pretty good, uh, there's some pretty good category, uh, there's some pretty good uh, numbers that might be can, uh, derived uh, through this. And what we're seeing is, is that only um, from moving from left to right in the bars, you can see that 5 million customers, 5 million customers are really concentrated in 31 utilities. So if you if you looked at this 100,000 and up, there's 31 utilities of that. And there's 5 million meters in that. Uh, but look at what's coming over the next. I've got 4 million, then almost 7 million, and then almost 5 million in the next block. And those are from utilities that go from 5,000 customers to 100,000. There's a lot of folks in there. So you're looking at utilities that uh, serve smaller numbers of customers, but yet their needs, their needs are big company needs. Uh, they need the data. They need to operate uh, in, the, in the way some of the big companies are, but maybe they're not staffed to take care of things like the big companies are. And so how can uh, smaller companies leverage uh, the technology and, and the knowledge of, um, of, of some of the managed services providers to give me that big company data that I need to operate? And we think that that's in the, uh, the managed services piece, obviously. So I'm always asked, buy versus own, what's the comparison? Well, in, in our case, uh, or in a case, uh, you can see, let's take, let's take a quick look at this. So typically, if you were to buy a system, somebody to come stand it up, take a look at it, a lot of your costs come in the, uh, the first year. As we look at this, the blue line is the customer-owned system where you do a traditional buy it, build it, deploy it type thing versus the managed services line where really the system has already stood up. You're subscribing now to that system. You're paying a, uh, uh, maybe some setup fees, professional services fees to get those uh, meters up and online. And in this, in this uh, particular comparison, the assumption is uh, a utility that has 50,000 meters, um, we're going to say, listen, they're going to install all of those in a year. Uh, it could be more than a year, uh, but that, that is going to actually drive the installation cost, um, or uh, it could drive the cost uh, of the blue line up actually, so I think the one year is actually a little bit better for the uh, for the buy side. And it also has the managed services fees come online at the time the meter is installed. Uh, typically you have two, uh, two operators for utility, uh, one to two, so that's in there, and that uh, there's some part-time IT support thrown in there. So let's walk through the, uh, let's do the, walk through the model and see what we have here. So we have the initial head-end software, hardware set up, all the licensing fees and things within the uh, within the the buy versus own model, and of course with the uh, uh, with which uh, which um, uh, so maybe that title's a bit wrong, but uh, uh, this with the uh, with the ho with the managed services, we start out with the professional services fee to bring those up, and you may notice there's a little bit of an uptick. 
those are professional services fees, but you see that none, since none of the meters or very few of the meters are actually installed at this time, the costs are low. And then as the meters come online, the cost is very steady throughout the next 10 years. What's the bump out here on the blue line? Well, the bump out on the blue line is there's a hardware refresh that somebody's going to have to do it somewhere uh, on the head-end software, head hardware piece. So servers, uh, servers are going to need to be replaced, updated. Our assumptions are that that maybe is happening in, in year five, and that's good through year 10. Some other models say that, well, maybe that needs to happen in year four, and then again in year eight. Uh, wanted to be very conservative with this and say, listen, we're going to do it in year five and let that go. So you can see that in the end, uh, you've got a large upfront cost. Yes, the system can be operated about the same amount of money, but in this next slide here, you'll see that that initial acquisition cost is never overcome by savings uh, in uh, operating cost in a uh, uh, buy, versus zone, buy versus zone, a managed services versus owning comparison. So um, anyway, I hope that's uh, been helpful. I think that at this point, uh, I'm probably uh, getting close to time. I do want to, uh, um, uh, we'll be taking questions for this, but I want to turn it on over to Bobby uh, at this time. Thanks, Brian. Um, advance here. Uh, so, so I wanted to start with a little bit about Texas New Mexico Power and what our service territory looks like. Um, you know, we're kind of scattered uh, uh, throughout the Texas operate or Texas area. We we don't really have uh, service territory in, in New Mexico anymore. That was absorbed by uh, our parent company, Pan and Resources. We did keep the the name. We have about 350 employees scattered throughout the uh, throughout our service territory in about 20 communities. Um, you know, we're a, we have uh, approximately uh, 9,000 miles of electric lines, 323 circuits, and about 100 substations. <clears throat> so, as as uh, Brian was indicating earlier, we are a small utility. Probably look like a lot of uh, you guys in terms of size and uh, in, in structure. Our Gulf Coast service territory is our, our most dense. We have a, about 224 meters per square mile, largely suburban. It also represents about 60% of TNP load. Our North Texas area has includes Louisville, which is a suburb of Dallas. Uh, Louisville alone is about 800 meters per square mile. The remainder of North Texas is about 25. So it's a pretty it's a pretty ag aggregated. It's a pretty uh, dense service territory, largely rural, uh, I mean largely urban, I'm sorry, uh, some uh, rural. Our West Texas area, is pretty, you can start to see the shift here from suburban to rural. Our West Texas area is largely rural, it's very sparsely populated, a lot of square miles and, and not a lot of customers. So again, if you're, if you're in a small utility, you may have some areas that look similar. And then our central Texas area, again, similar characteristics to, to the west, a little more dense, and it has 32 meters per square mile on average, predominantly rural. Uh, there are a couple of key little key cities uh, that are included uh, in those areas that kind of uh, at, give it a suburban uh, area, a suburban uh, kind of place. So Within TNP, our, our AMI infrastructure looks like this at about a 50,000 foot view. This is probably a very common uh, uh, perspective or look that, that you guys have, have seen. We've got customers that are able to access their uh, 15 minute interval data by way of the Smart Meter Texas portal. If you're familiar with the Texas market, uh, the, the four major uh, TDSPs, which is TNP, AEP, CenterPoint, and Encore, have, have a, a, a consortium to, to produce and support the Smart Meter Texas portal. Uh, it basically gives customers access to their usage. It doesn't have pricing information, but it allows them to model uh, uh, and, and see their, their, their consumption in 15-minute increments. TNP feeds that information from our back office, our back office systems, our MDM, which is also an iTron product. There's a lot of good uh, MDMS systems out there, but uh, ours happens to be iTron. Uh, we have a couple of other components to make up that back office uh, portfolio with a complex billing engine, our CIS system. Of course, we use TIDCO for integration. 
iTron ho currently hosts and manages our, our head end system. Uh, what might make this system look a little different than, than some of yours it is, is that it's an all cellular solution. We use AT&T for the backhaul currently. Um, our smart meters are, are, are produced by iTron, but they're manufactured by GE, so it's a, it's a partnership. We do have some Elster, Elster meters in our portfolio for CNI customers. And then we have Zigbee uh, uh, interfaced into the homes for customers that, that choose the IHDs or PCTs, if you're familiar with uh, those kind of uh, technologies, and then, of course, smart appliances. So this is, this is an overview of the landscape of our AMI. The piece that iTron takes care of for us and, and, and basically provides the hosting, the managed services, and the, the total solution around is the head-end system to, to the home. They, the, basically, the output for us is a, is a set of files that come to us on a daily basis and, and some, some integration points. But the, the actual data collection efforts, working with AT&T, our, our, our network carrier, the meter, and all the communications uh, required are provided by, by iTron. So if you look at managed services, to, to, to Brian's uh, point earlier, when you look at you know, managed services, it's much more than hosting or, 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 or a cloud solution. So hosting is obviously a piece of it, but they also operate the system for us, and then we're, we're looking at future, uh, future enhancements to include some analytics capability. Now, you know, again, hosting is, and cloud service-based, I think it's most, most utilities or most people are familiar with because we use them on a regular basis. But... Uh, I think what begins to separate um, our managed services engagement with iTron from other cloud-based solutions is the fact that they operate the system and, and basically the, the output is, uh, is actionable rather than uh, just data-driven. So from a hosting standpoint, I think most, again, most people are familiar with, you know, infrastructure sizing and build-out, with support and maintenance, any uh, software and operating system patches and upgrades, Performance monitoring, this is all standard, uh, I think, pretty much out-of-the-box hosting-type services that you would expect from a vendor. Where it starts to get a little, uh, again, separate our needs from, from other typical uh, hosting or managed services engagement is around the operating. So from a TMS administration, TMS being transaction management system, that's uh, that, the iTron head-end system that, that TNMP uses. They provide all the security, administration, support services. They manage the releases, upgrades, and patches. They help us monitor the performance of the system itself. And these are all these are all um, services that are, that are kind of a, a little bit above a, a normal um, what you would think of as a, as a as a hosted service. Deployment support. So we're still we're about 145,000 meters deployed out of 230,000 total. So iTron provides an on-site that to help us ensure that meters are provisioned, that that the system's functioning properly, that the meters are communicating, that and that we're uh, that any exceptions during that process are are, are are properly resolved. They also provide RMA support and coordination. The meter data collection is, you know, I mean, obviously we. If you have an AMI system, you're, you understand the schedule. The meter pushes pushes data, or the head end system collecting data. There's a lot of fallout that, that occurs during during those processes. iTron manages the currently manages all of the data recovery and cleanup efforts. So when the when the schedule is run to push data to the head end system, we're about 98% complete at that point in time. So that following 2% has to be recovered. iTron tech technicians manage that recovery. Uh, throughout the day, we also look. We also have gap fill processing that occurs. So as we look, evaluate the data in our MDM system, looking for um, looking for for gaps in interval data or gaps in day periods, iTron helps us to uh, recover that data. They also help help us manage the alarms and events that are uh, triggered during a uh, during a uh, uh, during the day. Firmware management, this is, you know, obviously the meter running software, if you have an AMI system, you understand that changes are, uh, are, are, are pretty regular. So making sure that the, the meters have the proper firmware version, that security uh, patches are pushed down as, as appropriate, doing all the testing and release management. 
these are other areas that, that we look to ITRON to provide that support. Uh, r reporting and, 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 uh, and management of the meter alarms. On a daily basis, we expect about a half a percent of our meters to not communicate for one reason or another. Um, they, they, that's a, it's a rotating. I mean, if you, again, if you've had if you've had AMI systems, you're familiar that you know, just some days you, you're not going to get them all. Uh, ITRON helps us to manage those non-com meters and take appropriate response once uh, you know once we've identified meters that need need, need further attention. And then they manage or help us manage the relationship with our network provider ATMs. So as we look to analytics uh, as the next kind of phase, and again, this is an area that is new to us, and it we haven't really um, we haven't it, it, having this big data and these all this capability, you know, ha we haven't we didn't build the system with with the intent of providing analytical capability. We built the system in order to, to satisfy our, our needs around, uh, around operational efficiencies or, you know, and, and, uh, and network stability. One of the, one of the areas that we're, we're beginning to pay particular attention to is, is around analytics and, and, and understanding how to take that data and better manage our, our network and better be better stewards of the asset. We kind of taken again. We're in our in our early stages of analytics. We've kind of taken a, a four stage approach. We're looking at first outage and restoration pre processing, and and trying to understand how we can not inundate our outage management system with uh, with noise from uh, from the meters. We're looking at revenue protection, asset visibility and management, and then event correlation and trending. So revenue protection, I think, is, is I've, I've sat in a few conferences here recently, and it's a, it's a pretty hot topic in terms of uh, is, it can, can a, just a case be made for AMI on revenue protection alone? At TNMP, we're not seeing the, the, we're not seeing significant increases in fees recovered, but what we are seeing is a shortened time frame uh, by which uh, we're detecting the outage. So if you look at, at an analog. You look at a, a, a case where uh, tamper with an analog meter. The average lifespan for those guys were about 13 months. It required a visual observation by a meter reader or another TNMP technician in order to in order to take action. With AMI, we're able to detect and resolve those those tamper cases within a week of of, of the occurrence. So even though the fees, even so from a cost standpoint, we're not seeing a significant advantage, we are seeing a shortened duration uh, and, and better stability on our network. Asset build, visibility and management is a, is a, we're calling kind of a phase three uh, approach to an analytics. As, as more and more meters are deployed, we're looking at, you know, we have, we have 2G meters, we have 3G meters, we have multiple versions of firmware, we have multiple uh, versions of the head-end system multiple versions of the hardware itself that's being deployed. So as these as these elements continue to, to evolve, we need a method to be able to, uh, to, to better track and manage the, the transition. It's kind of like an automaker when they issue a, a recall. At some point in time, you have to be able to say, these particular meters or these particular premises will be affected by uh, a meter accuracy issue or a meter uh, uh, reliability issue, asset, and, and you know, managing the, uh, the evolution of those firmwares and hardwares is is, uh, is something that we we don't, we don't it's not currently built into the head end system, and so we're, we're doing separate. Um, the last item is around event correlation and trending. Again, this is back to understanding what all elements are. Um, are changing and understanding how some of those changing elements may drive meter accuracy issues or meter stability issues. So if at some point in time we learn that uh, a particular series of uh, patterns or, or a pe particular pattern of alarms or events uh, result in a, in a meter failure or a meter accuracy issue, we're able to, uh, we're able to predict what, 
what the impact of those might be. Again, on any given day, we expect about a half of a percent of meters to not communicate. We also are, are seeing roughly 0.01% of our meters fail on a daily basis. So being able to correlate events and trend those events may give us better insight. It's not a problem if we have to replace 50 failed meters on a given day, but if that 50 turned into 500 or 5,000, it could be an issue. So being able to, to take events, trend them, correlate them, gives us the ability to, uh, to, to predict and better manage that. Here's just a couple of sample revenue protection use cases that we're looking at for some of our early stage uh, analytics. We, there are meter-based cases and interval data-based cases. A meter-based uh, use case would be any time that a meter removal event occurred and there's not a corresponding service order. So in this case, you know, the, a customer has, has pulled a meter off the wall, you know, re and which resulted in a tamper event with a meter with a, a power outage the meter was, re was reinstalled. Our assumption is if, there, if it wasn't one of our techs doing it, then there may be theft involved or some type of diversion. ITRON, takes, ITRON is currently providing uh, the, not just the data to support this, but in our future engagement, they will be providing the actual analyst. It's not TNMP's intent to receive, uh, you know, a, 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 you know, 500 alarms in a given day that, that, that may indicate tamper. Uh, it, but rather have the ITRON analyst pre-process that information, give us give us data that maybe if, if the if the meter is not incurring any other issues and those types of things, be able to factor out and give us a an actionable uh, plan to to address it. We're looking at RCD DC bypass attempts and then optical port. Now, again, the the, the key differentiator here is ITRON is providing the the, the an analyst as well as the data itself. NMP, as I mentioned on the first slide, has about 350 branded employees. We, there are a number of uh, shared services folks that, uh, that that provide HR and, and uh, payroll and accounting type services, but branded employees, which include our linemen, field techs, uh, some of our back office run team, um, total 350. So we don't we don't have a staff, an execution staff for uh, for our AMI, and at this point, we look to ITRON to provide that service, and of course, the interval base. Some of the reliability use cases that we also are factoring into our early stages of, of, of analysis, just performance and reliability anomalies. This is where we, we're receiving data that that may indicate something, may not indicate something. We need kind of the trouble to check engine light on your car. Uh, may not always mean you, you got to pull over to the side of the road, but it could. Uh, and having the, the experts at ITRON be able to assess that and give us uh, guidance uh, is critical to our, our management and operation. Power outage is not consistent across the transformer. This is where we start to look at across some of the very basic analysis around our PNMP's network to look for uh, anomalies that may, may cause us to look further uh, upstream than just the meter or just that localized service. Some of the interval, interval database uh, use cases uh, that, that we're also looking at are, are again, focused on, you know, on bringing together uh, meter data with alarm data and, 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 and or interval data and making certain that we're making accurate, accurate assumptions. And then, of course, peak demand exceeding transform respect. So these are some, these are some of the basic use cases, I think, uh, as we as we continue to learn more and evolve, we'll, we'll, we will grow. Uh, TNMP is, is we, we we did not justify our our AMI for for reliability purposes. It was part of a um, a, a push by you know the Texas market to to encourage customers to conserve. This is and then look for op operational efficiencies within uh, within our organization. We were not he did not justify this as a as a revenue protection vehicle or as a network stability vehicle. However, as we continue to deploy, we're looking further for, for additional ways to, to, to cut into those. And, and ITRON has been uh, partnering with us to help to develop that, leverage their expertise from other customers, and, and move in that direction. So I think that just about concludes what I have. If, if there's any questions, I think. 
All right. Well, what an informative presentation. Um, I want to thank uh, both Bobby and Brian uh, for bringing us this this information to uh, to our webinar. Uh, I do have a number of questions that have come in uh, during your presentation, and I'm just going to throw it out there and then let you you both uh, answer. Okay. Um, the first question uh, would be, um, how significant uh, do you think managed services solutions like what Texas New Mexico Power has implemented will impact IOUs? Well, I think, uh, hey, this is Brian, so I think that's a great, uh, great question. Uh, I think, obviously, uh, Texas New Mexico is an IOU, and I think that they, uh, early on, recognized the value of managed services. I think as, uh, as, as resource, human resources become uh, more and more scarce, uh, qualified human resources become more and more scarce, you're going to see some of the investor owns that have already, um, already uh, that are running their system today, we're going to see those guys reevaluate, and, and maybe in the second round or second generation, uh, AMI roles, uh, you may see those guys form this out to manage services as well so they can really focus on what their core is. Uh, that's what it looks like uh, from my seat. Uh, Bobby, any thoughts from you? You know, I, I, I agree, Brian. I think, that, you know, there are a lot of, you know, I've I talked with other municipal communities and co-ops that are comparable size or, or in a lot of cases smaller, and they all they all have interest in, in AMI uh, uh business case uh, it's hard to justify when you know when you're talking about a muni that may have you know 50 to 100 employees total you know how to support the, the these systems they're very complex they're very uh complicated there's a lot of moving parts there's a lot of uh, just oversight and management i know from a from our perspective our parent company has you know we have a very uh, capable data center in out in, in new mexico we have very capable uh, it support in terms of servers and networks and databases and those types of things, uh, you know, we, we're very confident in those areas. The piece that we really don't have is a good operations, you know, support to be able to, to run these systems, make, you know, good business decisions, and then, uh, and then execute them. Within PNNP, our guys are fantastic at keeping the lights on, restoring power, those types of things. We're not really a an operations center in terms of a, uh, managing an AMI. Right. Talk to larger companies like uh, AEP and Encore and, and those guys, of course, because they're they're right in our in our backyard. And uh, these guys have elaborate uh, operations centers set up just to manage their AMI, the head end system, the communication with the meters, the their 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 uh, RF mesh networks, and keep that those things alive. It's a it, it's a very complicated thing. To, to develop, it's a very complicated thing to support, uh, and then have it. So having a partner that has that expertise, I, I can definitely see where it would be appealing for a small utility just like us. All right, very well. Uh, next question: uh, Do you have any plans to add other applications to your system? And if so, how seamless is that process with a managed system? Bobby, you're in the middle of doing some of that now. Uh, do you want to take that first? Sure. So we, if you, the, so the diagram that I displayed earlier, it definitely shows a hybrid approach. We are we are uh, supporting some of our back office components, like the, met, in, the meter data management system, uh, internally, and then we have the head end system, of course, outsourced. Uh, you know, we haven't. I, I'm not. I'm not stating a direction, but we have kind of tossed around what it would look like if we moved bits and pieces of that to it more to, towards an outsourced, uh, you know, model. Uh, and then we've also looked at what if we brought some of those pieces back in. Um, so far, there's not much of a case for bringing them internal, but but as far as pushing them back out and pushing them into the hands of the experts, uh, does have. That does have some advantages. We haven't really talked about timing uh, or or cost around that, but we have definitely talked about uh, increasing our our our, our footprint with, with an outsourcing effort. Now that said, we also are deploying an outage management system. It's a, uh, through a different vendor, um, but we're also looking at a managed services relationship with with that vendor. 
So, so John, uh, just my take on this, Brian, uh, is that, yes, absolutely, our desire is to be able to add and layer in applications, and, and I think a lot of folks have the same idea, uh, make that seamless. And, and really what we want to do at iTron is to al- allow the, cu- the customer uh, to have a core set of solutions that, you know, it's going to be common to everybody. Uh, everybody's going to have to have data collected and, you know, you're going to want interval data and some alarms and things like that. But beyond that, uh, start layering on. Maybe I need, uh, maybe I need MDM functionality that uh, to uh, maybe use time-based rates uh, derived from interval data. Maybe I need uh, some sort of uh, metrics around that for billing. Perhaps I need uh, analytics, uh, you know, and maybe certain parts of it or even customer portal. So the desire is, is to be able to start with some particular core piece and allow customers, and I, and I think this is going to be common across anybody serving in this industry, is to uh, is to be able to add on those pieces seamlessly as the customer, uh, the utility desires to use them. Okay, very good. Um, next question, guys. Um, what were the most immediate operational efficiencies Texas New Mexico saw once the system was implemented? Well, obviously, the, the the use of that in automated infrastructure for remote uh, connects and disconnects, like move ins and move outs, and turn turn on and turn off. Um, so, I mean, we saw immediate impacts on that. We've cut and we've cut about eighty thousand truck rolls a month out of our, our a year out of our uh, out of our you know at, from just the use of that automated infrastructure. Um, we've we can also help customers by providing that data uh, on a regular basis. So we're hoping to, that, of course, the, of course, the hope is that the customers will having more information available to them will make better decisions around energy consumption and their usage behavior. So we're seeing, we we hope to see some uh, some relief uh, there on, on on the network itself. Um, but again, the most the, the most immediate need was just the, not having to roll trucks for for, for the complete routine. Uh, service order. So, so, hey, Bobby, let me uh, let me uh, pitch in here because I remember some of the early days when we were doing the role there at Texas New Mexico is is not only the, the disconnect reconnect but the uh, ability to see uh, somebody tampering with the meter. I, I know that there was uh, one occasion where I uh, saw the tamper had an adjacent utility member uh, trying to help uh, help his neighbor. Uh, um, actually uh, take the boots off of a meter and never seen a disconnect under the hood of uh, a meter. <laughs> you remember that, Bobby? And uh, I right, think right. TNP guys uh, rolled up on him while they were still trying to figure out uh, this meter with a disconnect in it. So uh, tamper and, uh, and eliminating truck rolls is uh, for disconnect reconnects, huge piece. And there's one, there's one additional piece that, that I, I think we didn't we didn't give enough credit to early on, and that was, uh, just just putting eyes. I mean, it's it's one of the few times in, in in our company's history that we've gone through and pulled every meter and had a chance to inspect the the the, the, yep. the meter, the the meter can, and it's just you know it's a it's a, there, there was some value in that. You find a lot of things. You find we we found uh, loose lugs that in in some meter cans that that you know at some point could have prevented a, a customer's house fire or some. We we found you know. Uh, we of course found a lot of tamper, uh, and then we found some, you know, just uh, you know, odds and ends things that you would never find going out on a monthly basis with a meter reader and just and just reading meters. Okay. Uh, next question: uh, Have you done any metrics or evaluation of cost savings as a result of having managed system? So we have we don't we haven't done a, a tremendous amount of of, of of, of just a, a metrics around um, cost savings related to managed services. What we have, what we have been able to determine is that the skill sets are so complicated and complex. Just, just ha- being able to put our hands on the skill set required to operate some of these systems uh, w- was a pretty daunting task. I mean, just looking for a couple of analysts, for example, on, on you know, on-site analysts has been tough. That has the skill sets needed to support these emerging technologies. Maybe in five, to, five or ten years, as, as these technologies are more proliferated, and you know, maybe the skill sets will be more widely available. Um, but at this point in time, we don't really have a good set of metrics. But I'm, I'm not sure that 
that I could actually pull together enough uh, enough metrics that to, to paint the story about the, the you know just the the, the, the skill set shortage. So, so John, let me pitch in and, and maybe uh, maybe uh, pivot just a little bit on this. Is that as we're looking at metrics, one of the things that we're seeing uh, utilities uh, struggle with is they've got a variety of choice, and uh, in, in in what we see is perhaps maybe a little of apples versus orange comparison. Uh, there again, we're talking about a fully managed services versus uh, versus a hosted. Uh, managed services is where ITRON or others would tweak the knobs, if you would, for the utility customer and uh, versus the utility customer having to operate the system themselves, even though it's in a cloud uh, somewhere. So, you know, uh, beyond that, uh, you know, a utility should be asking uh, who is, who's doing what, who is maintaining the system, what are my uh, communications costs, uh, how are those rolling into that, and uh, in, 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 in how do those play into it? Uh, I think I think Bobby pointed on a huge piece uh, just a minute ago is is who and how do you account for in maybe an RFP with regard to who is actually doing the uh, the system maintenance, the system revisions on software, hardware, uh, and when is that done? Uh, who is doing the endpoint firmware updates and pieces? So. You know, you need to be sure as you're looking at these systems, who is responsible for what, and then uh, coming up with strategies to normalize uh, those across the offering so that uh, you can understand uh, what those what that value bring brings to you. Obviously, we're we're proud of what we've been able to do with TNMP. Very good, very good. All right, uh, another question uh, that has just popped up with uh, with remote disconnects. Can your customer service folks? Utilize this capacity through your CIS system. So the answer is yes, uh, but we don't. So in the Texas market is deregulated. Such so if, you're from, if you're familiar with the deregulated market, uh, the, the, the generators are separate from the TDSPs, the lines and wires company, and then there's retail providers that kind of own that customer uh, inter, inter, interface. TNP is a TDSP in the sense that we just deliver the electric, electricity. So we we do own the meter. We do own the, the you know the service to the meter. So a, a retail provider will send to TNP a a turn on or turn off or disconnect and reconnect whatever you want to however you want to turn that uh, via EDI or electronic data. So basically just a electronic transaction to turn that on or off. It processes through our C our our our, uh, uh, customer, our CIS goes across the head end system to um, uh, to I, at, at iTron out to the meter and turns the meter off. So yes, but but our customer service folks don't do that. Our our system does it, but our folks don't do that. The, okay. the retail provider customer service folks provide that capability. Okay, very good. All right. Well, looking at our hour, we are nearing the top of the hour, and I want to be. Uh, respectful of everyone's time that's on our webinar, and we want to go ahead and conclude. Um, if your question was not answered, or if you have a question that um, uh, you think of later, uh, please email Lisa Collins with the CS Week office, and uh, we'll forward that question on to our presenters and uh, get an answer for you. And so at this time, we want to conclude our webinar, and we thank uh, our two presenters. We want to thank uh, Bobby Roberts with the Texas New Mexico Power and Brian Seal with ITRON. Uh, you guys did a wonderful job, and we want to thank you for uh, being on our webinar today. This concludes our webinar. Thank you.